All right, welcome back to another episode of your favorite podcast. His favorite podcast where the beats was crisp, the lunch was hot, hopefully it was lunchable or something like that. You know, the latest was curved, but you know, as we always say, they were going to hit the staircase later on. Banco, what up? Holla at me. Um, as per usual, it's your boy Jeff Destiny, part of my flash, G Diddy in tune, uh, lab and all, fuck with me, what's going on? Uh, to actually across from me, and it's been a while, you know what? I actually thought about this today. It's 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 been a while since it's been just the two of us, Paul. You know what I'm saying? Just the two of us, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh across to me the man that does the research till no end. And 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 if the test was on black history, he definitely got hundred and fifteen. My man Jamal Gill. Hey. Talk to me, player. I'll take that. Um I'm not that I'm not that really good at uh, black history, but I would say that I would be interested in the class and apply myself and try to overachieve. But that's neither here nor there. Well, Jeff, who we got? Who we got with us today? Uh, we have a friend of mine that I actually met la- around this time last year, I believe. I believe. Uh, you know, you know, Gil. I always make my little annual retreats down to the motherland of DC. The too. motherland. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To go chocolate green. city, <laughs> chocolate, chocolate heaven. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And uh, I happened to be in the club, and uh, this y- this young lady was just doing a thing in the club, but through finding out that she was friends with my older brother, yeah, and then. And then just watching her moves, we see that we have someone here who is galvanized and be millennial vote. Yes, I've been I didn't reading really had that in the vocabulary, bro. Yo, you been trying to that was well because that was well placed. Big words are as well placed. Listen, as listen, well placed. you got different. You know what? I'll let it go. go. Um, we have Miss Wen Cuny Seon. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I would say from Florida, or it might be DC, it might be Philly. She's all over the world, but. We have a special guest with us today who is making a difference in the political process for us millennials and everything like that. So, you know, uh, we've been in conversation for like close to a year now about mm-hmm. you coming on. So first of all, I appreciate the fact that you want to come on here a year ago and everything yes. like that. And, and we waited, we waited, we waited. And now that things, well now that it's that, it's that season almost, and not the NBA season of course, uh, it's the political season where you know where votes are casted on all levels, state, yes. federal, local, and everything like that. Uh, it is time for us to get some education, not just for ourselves, but for the people that can make a difference in the process. So, with that being said, we welcome you to the table, my lady. Yes, yes, yes. Thank yes. you so much for having me, gentlemen. Girl, you know, you overdo, girl. Jeff Stop playing with and me. And Jamal have been so gracious towards oh, you. Lying, me. You lying like shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yes, so I am originally from Miami. Mm. Um, Both. A, a true Haitian. Uh, <laughs> from uh-huh, Miami. Uh-huh. Um, mm. But I grew up in the Fort Lauderdale area. Okay. Um, and then from there, I proceeded to the the motherland, as you call it, the Mecca, Boom. Howard University, oh, um, where I studied biology, actually. So I had an interesting... You were a bio? Dad. I was a bio major, which is how I met Mike, because he was wow. in uh, the PA program. I, never, so was, that's funny. I, I, I think he told me that y'all really got cool, I think, on that trip in Haiti, something like yes. that. Yes, so medical like, mission Mike, trip. I'm in the water, like, yes. what? Stuff like that. So, like, that was, it was, that was interesting. That's what it was. And then um, from there, I went to Drexel University in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. That's where I studied um, public health. I got my master's in public health mm-hmm. there. And I got uh, a concentration in health management and policy. So the management mm-hmm. side was was used in, in a certain way, but the policy side is really probably what opened up my mind to start thinking about politics. Mm-hmm. Um, I graduated from Drexel in 2016. Then I, I took a year, went back to Florida uh, while I was applying for a Fulbright mm-hmm. fellowship. And then I, I did a Fulbright in Senegal for a year, uh-huh. so I was living. She in won the full brother. Let's not, let's not, let's not. Let's come on. Don't play. Let's say I, 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 I applied and I won. I won. You know, it's and you know, Fulbright. I actually did a little bit of a podcast myself while I was out there. It was called Culturati, and it talked about cultural issues between African Americans and Africans. Oh. Um, and it, it was super interesting. That's Probably right up your alley. Yeah, yeah, that's a topic, right? There. Um, because I had never considered myself like as a quintessential African American, I always was like, I'm Haitian, I'm a Haitian American, etc. Yeah. But when you're out of the country, you're right. African American, yeah. you're black. Yeah. So I started realizing there was there's a polarity between 
African Americans and Africans, and there was a lot of misunderstanding between yeah. the cultures. I feel like there's a lot of condescension from their side as well. There is. There's on both. I mean, so I'm I'm also looking at it from a, like a different perspective, completely different. You got to see it all. Right. You got the privilege of seeing it all. I don't. I'm only judging from like, damn, why y'all looking down on us like that? I think. I can't, you know, I can't speak for anyone, but I will say being raised in a Caribbean household and having a lot of African friends. I should know. I should know. Ah. You know, we were, we, were, we were punished in a certain way, but I think part of the issue was when your parents immigrate from a foreign country and they work really hard to be able to get you in certain doors, mm -hmm. I think part of the issue was once you're, once we're all in the classroom, or you're African American, I presume. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so yeah. once we're all in the classroom, we're all black, yeah. right? But a lot of the times, these African and Caribbean students are, you know, achieving at these certain levels, and they see the African American community and not necessarily doing the uh, same to achieve. Yeah. And their thought process is like, well, you've been in this country X amount of years. I just got here and I'm trying to shine. Yeah. But yet we're all grouped together because we all we're all the yeah, same people. The same. So all is gonna be the same. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it was challenging for them, I think, to relate to African Americans. Okay. But it's it's just a lot of stigma there. But I think the best way we can break those doors down is by communication, and that's really what the podcast was about. Um, so I learned a lot. I learned a lot, and I traveled all throughout the African continent on the government stop, which was awesome. Um, she, won. Won. she won life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, was, I was having a good time with <laughs> yeah. So I went to like Nigeria, Ethiopia, South Africa, Ivory Coast. I was, I was traveling. Touched, I touched everywhere. Tried to, tried to touch every coast. Um,